Hey students, uh, in this video, this video is specially designed or recorded for the students who want to join DNB course in respiratory medicine at NITR in New Delhi. This video is meant for those students so who have just qualified their NEET exam or they want to join NITRD as a respiratory medicine postgraduate course. So if I want to say in one word, you have to, if you are getting a chance to go to join a DNB course especially respiratory medicine at NITRD just go for it do not think twice because the institute it's a premier institute and one of the best institute available in our country for respiratory medicine training why I'm saying so we will discuss one by one all the points and then you will able to understand why it is important why I am saying this thing Dr. Ekumar Sarma I did my post graduation from the same institute in ITRD New Delhi and now currently I am working as an assistant professor in the department of respiratory medicine at government medical college Haldwani Sushilatwari hospital. So let's start and if you want to know the details of everything so you watch this video completely because we will discuss all the segments about uh, duty hours, stipend, work culture, hostel availability, mess even uh, as a whole at atmosphere and the campus life in this video so this video might be a little bit longer but be patience and listen the whole try to see the complete video so coming to respiratory medicine academics there so if I have to give 10 marks that is the maximum one if I have to give 10 I will give 10 out of 10 at least because academics are well structured well designed by our actually Dr. Rupak Singla and he is the simply a, a, a genius and a giant person in the respiratory medicine field and the sir has blessed all of us what we are today is because of our faculty there at NITRD so if you join DNB training at NITRD you will be provided a predefined the academic schedule that is will really be available for all of you three years of training or maybe if you are joining for two years that is also applicable for two years training and that academic schedule is for throughout the year and you will be knowing beforehand that in which month which academic activity is going to be scheduled and it is academic schedules are taken very very seriously by Rupak Singla sir and all students all PGs must be present there because that academic schedule is so much beautifully designed that you will get a maximum exposure and you will all your theory knowledge practical knowledge will be very much all your doubts will be cleared in that session so usually that academic schedule is from 2 to 3 pm and it's on a daily basis most of the time on Monday it is faculty lecture, Tuesday it is your pathology class, Tuesday it is uh, witness days, uh, some, uh, like your uh, journals review, Thursday it is uh, radiology uh, and so on. So it's a whole day, whole week, it's almost packed with the uh, academic session. And academic session are really wonderful, the classes are taken by the faculty itself, sometimes guest faculty also come to take the classes from the different universities and eminent in their area, so they also take the class in that part so that is the academic apart from this round starts early in the morning so that is very important and round is very beautifully done by the faculties and senior resident also so, and that round is a more of your clinical discussion and the, it's a bedside clinical discussion of all the patients so that is a user norm for most of the medical colleges and the tertiary care hospital so if that is academic part number two coming to your duty hours so normal duty hours how much a resident uh, normally are exposed to work or supposed to work usually first year resident they should come they are expected to come in the world by 7 30 or 8 a.m and they have to do work even after maybe 4 or 5 p.m sometime depending on the, if the patient load is high so it can go up to 5 30 6 or some 7 also that uh, is uh, usual duty hours and in between there is a lunch lunch is always there between 1 to 2 p.m and between 1 to 2 p.m what you do you come to the ward for the first day especially you come to the ward by 8 or maybe 8 30 or maybe uh, 7 uh, 45 depending on your schedule or there and you do your ward work you complete all your files you see all you see all your patients take the vitals and you complete the round and post round work you do you fill forms you do some dressings and you do some your work and by 12 or maybe 12 30 or 1 am you finish all your round work you go to the lunch between 1 to 2 you take your lunch and after 2 pm you have to go to your uh, uh, that is a, a seminar room or that is called a 
classroom where there will be academic activities will be held every day from 2 to 3 pm after 3 pm if academic activity is over you again come back to your ward check the patient report that evening report that has come in the evening time and you discuss if any abnormality is there or any if any plan of management is changed or if any decision uh, is required decision is changed in that for that sense you complete if you complete your work by 4 or 4.30 maybe 5 then you can come back to your hostel so this is a routine duty of a resident first year knows their duties second year knows their duties third year SR so it is a hierarchy pattern first year will complete the case sheet he will look after all the investigation are done appropriately or not he will look after for all the vitals of the patient then second year will monitor the treatment part in the discussion with the faculty members or the senior as here so by the by doing all these discussions it is normally done and it's very beautifully done so all the wards yeah, and all the patients and everything is goes very smoothly there so that is a part of your work culture so work culture is definitely very very good if uh, i have to give any marks i will give 9 out of 8, 8 or you can say 8 out of 10. So work culture is very very good and it is well structured, well organized. You know what are your duties are. So that is your academics, then is your work and third is your hostel availability. So yes, all residents, they are hostel is available in the campus and campus is very beautiful and you get all your residents and hostel in the campus. Mess. Food is very very good and it is mess facility for students doing post graduation training is very well maintained. So here they will we will get a, a non vegetarian diet, vegetarian diet of a very good quality, and that you can also if you want some you want some extra meal if you want some extra food that can be also taken care of. So that is not an issue. So mess mess is very good as compared to any other institute and hostel availability. In campus there is a place for uh, you know you can ride a bicycle you can play in the campus so that is a well campus is very well and very beautiful campuses there is a it's a, a green area so mostly so campus is very good for that pattern and then comes your stipend so stipend is as it's a, uh, almost equal to your uh, all the delhi government hospitals around you can say 75 to 85 thousand that depending on that may be increased by this time i, I have really no exact idea but uh, at our time we used to get 75 80 thousand maybe in between that as long as you increase your residency so it's happened also tends to increase by your period of training okay so this is all about your academics hostel availability and work culture and a type of cases if i say that respiratory medicine it is not only caters about tuberculosis patient but it caters almost all variety of respiratory medicine cases there you will find uh, rare respiratory medicine cases and uh, the cases which are very much complicated and which are uh, difficult to diagnose there we also deal with the, the those kinds of cases there and uh, regarding intervention so intervention is a very important part that all of us are concerned during our residency period so interventions is very uh, uh, almost bronchoscopy thoracoscopy icu training it's uh, all available there and you will have a free hand for all of this under supervision of your seniors and the faculty members and the workload is so good that you will be get enough chance to expose yourself doing all these procedures. One important point you will learn extra from there is the back of thoracic surgery. Thoracic surgery department is phenomenal there. It's wonderful there. Under the guidance of Dr. R.K. Divansar and he was a, he is a very well known thoracic surgeon. So uh, if if you have, you want to go for a uh, you want to see the thoracic surgeries, lung surgeries, so that institute is also very premier for that. Okay, so this is about your. Uh, more or less academic part, stipend part and yes somebody has asked me about the toxicity I really do not mean uh, what is it wanted to know about toxicity uh, uh, there is no toxicity all the people all the units there are very good all the faculty members the professors teachers and colleagues are also it's a it's a very good environment what I uh, we fail there uh, we fail there so it's a wonderful institute as a whole and if you find any chance to go there so because be there the microbiology lab the training methodology, the PFT, uh, pulmonary function test is directly under supervision of Dr. Rupak Singhla sir and he is, as I said, he is a master of the respiratory medicine. So what we have learned today is all uh, under his uh, guidance, under the sir guidance and he maintained a proper uh, proper protocol for every, each and every training. So it's very important and it's a very, very important for all of us to understand those who are going to join NITRD in the respiratory medicine, they must join without thinking a second thought. 
because this is the place where you will find a well structured organized work culture and academics together so this is a very good institute for all of you so without any doubt you can go you can join and you can learn very well in the three years of two years of your training and during training period you get maximum time or you get enough time to study yourself sometimes what happens if you compare for some other institution they are working like uh, no rotations and continuous duties are there 48 hours 24 hours 36 hours like that but here duties are very much it is well organized your duties your work culture your work schedule is very well organized so that you can you have enough time for your studies you have enough time for your laser activities you can go out you can have some time for yourself so this all everything is taken care of so this institute is definitely a institute of excellence as far as respiratory medicine training is concerned and also dnb has awarded nitrd as an institute of excellence for dnb training so that's another part little bit of uh, cons i would like to discuss something some about uh, pitfalls there is that is one thing is uh, it's uh, um, more of your respiratory medicine uh, cases are there so sometime what happens that if the patient is as complicated by the other medical issues like cardiac issues is there some neurological problem is there so in that situation uh, we have to send some patient for uh, medicine evaluation to your subdarjan that is nearby hospital so that is a little bit of you can say limitations we had there but still since respiratory medicine and critical care medicine encompass your everything almost uh, critical care part deals with the all systems so by you get um, all the cases so you tend to uh, know all the cases and the management of all the complicated clinical situations having underlying comorbid illness so that is not a big issue but it is a sometime it may be a little bit limitations maybe there sometime another extra point you will get the exposure or and the treatment of your lung cancer lung cancer is very well taken care of under the uh, uh, it's a jk saini sir he is very uh, specialist and he is very much interested in the lung cancer so that is a very important part you can uh, deal there lung cancer pediatric tuberculosis there is a special ward for pediatric patient pediatric uh, lungs problem pediatric tuberculosis and pediatric respiratory issues so that is a separate ward together you will be posted in that also and in that situation you can have exposure to the pediatric tuberculosis hand on experience so hand on experience in icu yes you have a plenty of hand on experience in ward yes you will get a plenty of experience plenty of hand on experience you will be doing icds intercostal tube drainage pleural respiration bronchoscopy you can assist or you can perform uh, thoracoscopy also as you go uh, in your higher uh, residency uh, years and uh, that is a very important so exposure to your hands on experience practical experience practical exposure is very very much high so you will get a free hand there under the guidance of your seniors and the faculty member so it's a never a problem for that if your learning is concerned so it's a overall if i want to sum up some of the things so it's a very best institute available in our country so go for it and just go for it and without thinking anything about it so the faculty members the institute the hospital is a wonderful for learning the respiratory medicine and you will never regret by doing your dnb training at nitrd hope this video will be helpful for you in some aspects if you have any doubt any comment just let me know in the comment box or you can mail me here in the uh, dr ravi at com. i will be putting here you can mail me and i will be trying i will try my best to solve all your queries so hope this video will be useful if this is useful then uh, share among your friends share among your batchmates who are interested or are planning to join respiratory medicine training at nitrd new day